Insomniac Spider-Man is a good game, but it's not perfect. I think there's a lot of room to improve here, and with the sequel coming out soon, here's a list of things that I take issue with that I really hope they fix in the future. The charge jump is cool, but it's a little finicky. What gets me the most is that while holding the charge, you'll lose it if you parkour over anything and you'll need to charge it again. This is super annoying when it happens and I can't imagine that it was intentional. Being able to blast away as soon as you're done parkouring would be incredibly cool so I hope they change it to function like that. Something else that I like to see is the ability to do the charge jump while on a perch point. Often I want to blast off while being perched on the side of a building, instantly shooting high up on and being able to swing from there. But I can't. Maybe this charge perch jump could be a little weaker than the normal charge jump to compensate for him already being on a higher surface, but as long as I'm able to do it, I won't mind. Spider-Man needs a way to go directly up while in the air. His inability to go directly upwards while already airborne isn't especially noticeable most of the time, but during aerial battles it becomes impossible to ignore. Miles actually has a way to do this with his Venom jump, so I think it makes sense for Peter to get something similar. Something as simple as propelling himself upwards with his webs, similar to this ability from Web of Shadows, would be good enough. The zip to wall slash zip to ceiling feels inconsistent. Sometimes you aim right at a perfectly nice wall and you can't zip to it. Then you aim like an inch away and then the game decides that you can. Not exactly sure what can be done to fix this, but it needs to get fixed. I also don't like how Spider-Man can't start running as soon as he zips to a wall, instead being forced to crawl for a second or two, even if you're holding R2 the entire time. It makes him unnecessarily slow and clunky. Spider-Man needs to be able to wall run downwards. It actually took me a while to even realize that I couldn't do this, but once I did notice, it started to bother me a lot. Having the ability to run downwards would give the player more control over Spider-Man, sure, but there's a very specific reason I want to do it. Bomb missions. I can't tell you how many times I'd be doing a bomb mission where I'd land above the bomb and then try to run downwards to disarm it. Since I can't do that, I'd be forced to either jump off the wall and latch back onto it at a lower point, or just slowly crawl towards the bomb while the timer takes away. Wall crawling in general feels really weird. Spider-Man has a hard time transitioning between surfaces, sometimes just being unable to go from a wall to a ceiling or vice versa. He can't crawl over like 2 inch ledges, which is fine for the most part because you can just run over them, but like, still, we had this figured out on the PlayStation 1, why is it so weird? The animation where he transitions to a different wall side or the ceiling or picks himself up needs to be faster and it needs to be cancelable. It's just so slow and awkward looking. When web slinging low to the ground, Spider-Man will hover above the ground for a bit before his web actually shoots out. This looks really weird and is completely unnecessary. I understand this is done to make web swinging easier, but there is still a way to do this without giving Spider-Man the ability to fly. Spider-Man could just run along the ground during the swing, or pull himself upwards with a web first before he starts to really swing. The cell towers are entirely unnecessary. They're not there for fun, they're there so that people can get addicted to unlocking them, therefore extending playtime and engagement. I hate these. You want people to explore your map more? Put secrets in there, side quests, tokens hanging around, hell, maybe even a few alternate suits, which they basically already do, making the cell towers completely unnecessary. The web strike is not tutorialized correctly. This is something I only really learned by watching streamers play through the game, but the web strike is just not properly explained to the player. The web strike is an attack that pulls you towards the enemy, and that's it. It's your distance closer, it doesn't do much damage, and isn't meant to be used as a main attack. And yeah, I know this, largely because I played a lot of other Spider-Man games before this, but a lot of other people don't. All the game tells you about the web strike is that you push triangle to do it. That's all. So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people didn't understand its actual utility. In fact, I know that's what happened. In the first boss battle against Kingpin, once he's webbed up and open to attack, the game puts a big triangle indicator above his head. What this is supposed to mean is that you can now attack him, so use the web strike to get in close and then continue to hit him normally with square. But I saw some people playing the game who took this indicator to mean that they should only press triangle, not realizing that the web strike is not meant to do much damage. So this needs to be addressed, just a little more text during the tutorial to explain what the web strike actually does and what it's for, I think that's all you need. As far as I remember, webbing up enemies to the wall or floor to KO them is not tutorialized at all. This is a pretty important mechanic, something you'll need to know to get through higher difficulties like Ultimate. 
and I don't think the game ever actually explains it. Granted, I feel like most players eventually pick up on this by themselves, but the fact that this game heavily tutorializes basically everything, but not this for some reason, just feels weird. The gravity gadget is stupid, doesn't feel like something Spider-Man should have as part of his normal arsenal. I think the best solution here is to remove it as a gadget and make it a suit power instead. As a possible replacement, the decoy clone suit power would make a nice gadget. Shoot the gadget, out pops one decoy clone. Think uh, the inflatable snakes from MGS5. It'd be cool in stealth situations and would be somewhat useful in combat to get enemies away from you for a second or two. The decoy clone electrocuting enemies upon their destruction should probably be an upgrade and not a default feature of the gadget since it's a pretty strong ability. The drone gadget is sort of redundant due to the drone suit power. I also don't like how little control over it you have. This is a personal thing, but I just like to have control over what I do in games. The drone gadget is an incredibly brain-dead gadget that removes player control in a game that's already really easy and automated. I think it's fine as a suit power, but not as a normal gadget. The ground throw animation needs to be shorter. I basically never use the ground throw because of this, nearly always opting to use the air version because it's so much faster. And because it's already so long and slow, the upgrade that gives you the ability to make it even longer is just laughably useless. At least the option of putting health bars on enemies would be nice. As it is, it's nearly impossible to discern how much health enemies have. Not a huge problem on lower difficulties since enemies die quickly, but it'd be really helpful on higher difficulties. Some sort of lock-on would be nice. I spend way too much time swiveling the camera around looking for surviving goons. Maybe have the enemy detection on R3 focus the camera on the nearest enemy when it's used. This could also be an option in the settings in case some players don't want it. There should be an option to turn off the slow-mo cinematics on finishers. After you see them enough time, the slow-mo becomes unnecessary. It also speed up combat encounters, which would be nice, especially on repeat playthroughs. Spider-Man needs more animations for his default combo. Since he has no actual different combos, he needs more animations to avoid combat getting stale. You have to make the new animations the same speed as his existing ones so that players don't get frustrated with slower movements, but I think this is realistically doable. Jumping needs to be a more viable method of avoiding damage. Jumping is basically useless as a way to dodge since grounded enemies can still hit you while you're in the air. If a player tries to jump to avoid damage, the game will brutally beat them until they realize that they should basically only be using the dodge on circle to avoid attacks. This becomes a problem once boss fights force you to jump to avoid attacks, as the entire game before that has been telling you that jumping is not a good way to do that. Probably the easiest way to do this is making Spider-Man jump higher by holding down the jump button. Pressing it normally gives you the jump he has now, but holding it down causes him to go a bit higher. Spider-Man's web yank when holding triangle is basically useless. As it is now, it just kind of turns them around. I really don't get the point of this. So having the enemies come closer to Spider-Man when you yank them would be great. The ground pound is really weak. I use it all the time because I think it looks cool, but in terms of utility, it doesn't actually do anything. It barely does damage, it barely staggers enemies, and from normal height, it doesn't even have that big of a range. Not exactly sure how you could improve this one, but it needs something. The suit powers need a clear indicator of how long each one takes to charge. I barely used a lot of the suit powers because I didn't even want to try them out, since I was unsure of how long they'd take to recharge, aka how long I'd be vulnerable after using them. A lot of the suit powers need to be balanced better. Off the top of my head, there's no reason to use either the bulletproof or bullet reflect powers once you get the defense shield. Defense shield protects you from way more threats, so it's just better. Web Blossom is stupidly OP, especially since it's one of the first powers you can get. It recharges pretty fast and can take down an entire wave of enemies in an instant. The velocity power is just kinda silly. I think this one is mostly okay as a gimmick, but it'd be significantly better if Spider-Man's attacks and general movement got faster while he was using it. The anti-grav ability is fun for wacky traversal goofs, but really not all that useful in combat. Maybe this one should get a longer duration or a shorter cooldown because I'm genuinely struggling to find an unironic reason to use it. Costumes are a big part of this game, and for the most part they're handled very well. For the most part. This game does have a few screw-ups in my opinion, and I like to point them out in hopes they get fixed in the future. I really don't like how the piping on this suit is purple. Why is it purple? This isn't something you'd even really notice most of the time, but there are some lighting conditions where the purple piping really stands out and it looks really bad. 
The lack of anything on the back of the suit is really jarring. I understand that they didn't want to give him the web cape from the comics, since that would mean programming cape physics for one costume, and they didn't want to give him a symbol on the back since that wouldn't be accurate to the comics, but having nothing there just makes the suit boring to look at. In a video game like this, the player is going to be staring at the player character's back for like 80% of their playtime, so I feel like there needs to be something there to keep things visually interesting. If they can't do the web cape, then I'd happily take a spider symbol on the back, even if that isn't accurate to the comics. Also, why is it called the 2099 black suit? I know that in the comics the suit was originally meant to be black, but it's blue in the game, so why the name? They should have just called it the 2099 suit, and then the ANAD version could just be the 2099 white suit. I, I really feel like that would have been simple, but okay, whatever. The eyes are the wrong color. They should be black. That's how it was in the comics, and that's what looks best. Having the eyes be bright silver completely ruins the black and white color scheme the costume had by throwing in a third color. Also, the light silver on white is not as striking as black on white, so aside from being inaccurate, it just doesn't look as good. I actually think this version of the bombastic Bagman suit is my favorite version of the suit ever. I never really liked the suit before because of the exposed feet, but Insomniac fixed that and even did a little more by drawing Spider-Man shaped eyes on the eye holes of the paper bag. Still, the costume is missing a pretty huge detail. The kick me sign. I think Insomniac may have wanted to remove the sign because they didn't want it flopping around on Spider-Man's back and clipping into things, but I think a simple solution would be to have the sign taped down on all four sides so that it stays in place on the costume. Additionally, like I said before, it's important to put something on the character's back so you're not just staring at blank empty space. Apparently the color red is just hard to render or something because some of the suits in this game that are supposed to be red are orange instead. It's most noticeable in the advanced and classic suits. Then there's the MCU Iron Spider suit, which is also weirdly orange. The Last Stand suit has a red jacket, but an orange mask. Why? They seem to have learned their lesson though, since the new advanced suit and the teaser for the sequel is actually red, but I really hope these other suits get fixed too. Alright, I saved the worst for last. Without a doubt in my mind, I think this game's biggest weakness is its boss fights. While full of spectacle, these segments are so mechanically shallow that I think even the LEGO games have more complex boss encounters. The main issue is that all the boss fights are pretty much the same. You either web up the guy and then punch him, or you throw something at him and then punch him. Let's go through them so that you see what I mean. Kingpin. Web him up or throw something at him, then punch him. Defeat a few goons, then repeat. Shocker. Throw something at him, then punch. Mr. Negative, round one. Uh, I don't even know what was going on here. This this is basically like a mobile game tier boss fight. Bar I'd barely even count it as a boss fight, really. I mean, I get it, you know, the, the environment and all that, but still, ugh. Tombstone, literally just Kingpin. He has his flaming ball and chain, but outside of that, he's just Kingpin. Web up or throw, then punch. Taskmaster, throw something at him, then punch. Admittedly, there are a few ways you can get a little creative with him, but not many. Electro and Vulture, visually impressive, but mechanically dull. You web up Electro, then punch him. You web his Transformer, then punch him. You web Vulture, then punch him. You dodge Vulture's super obvious slow-mo attack, then punch him. There are Vulture's feather projectiles that you can throw, but throwing is a little too slow for this to be more than an occasional novelty. Scorpion, web, then punch. Scorpion weirdly face plants once you web him up for some reason. I don't know why, it makes like no sense physically. It's weird because this is the coolest Scorpion has ever looked, but also by far his most embarrassingly weak incarnation. Rhino, literally worse and less interactive than the Rhino boss fight in the PlayStation 1 game. In the PS1 game, you could damage Rhino with the electric generators by throwing explosive barrels at him, or you could just punch him normally. In the PS4 game, you knock a thing into him, and then you punch him, and that's it, that's the only way to damage him. Mr. Negative Round 2, the true final boss of the game, since Octavius is actually really easy and more of a victory lap than anything else. Not many negative things to say here, the boss fight is actually pretty dope. While you do mainly just throw things at him and then punch him, you also have the opportunity to counter him and do some nice air combos, so that's pretty cool. Dr. Octopus. Easy as piss. Didn't even need to use the boss fight specific suit power to beat him, even on ultimate difficulty. You just web him up, then punch him. Hammerhead. Not too bad of a boss fight. He has a bunch of different attacks that you need to be aware of while also dealing with his goons. 
However, it's weird that you can't do air takedowns on him. By that I mean you can't do a takedown on him while you are in the air. If he's in the air and you're on the ground, then you can still do a takedown. Just really strange, since Hammerhead frequently goes into the air in this fight. Also not a fan of the arena, it's a little too constricting for the boss fight, but eh, it's fine. Silver Sable. At first I legitimately had no idea what the hell I was even supposed to do against her. Sometimes she shoots your webs out of the air, sometimes she blocks them with a shield, sometimes she does nothing and just gets webbed up. She automatically does an extremely punishing attack if you try to complete a combo against her, which is just extremely unfair towards players. Also, you can do takedowns on her. I guess since Spider-Man isn't trying to really take her down, but still, weird. The first time I fought her, the only way I could beat her was by spamming the ground pound since it's the only move that created an opening. In actuality, all you have to do is dodge her normal attack string and then counter. That's it. Bionicle Hammerhead Disregarding his stupid design and the almost literally brain dead storyline, this version of Hammerhead isn't too bad of a boss fight. He has one attack that's kinda bullshit where he leaps onto a tower and shoots his beam in a U shape. Because of the shape of the beam, you can actually still get hit even if you dodge the initial beam. The way this boss fight works is that you need to damage his leg so Spider-Man can pin him down and get Sable to microwave his brains. Then you can damage his head. So you can damage his legs without needing to web him up, but due to how aggressive he is, you should probably do that anyway. I'm confused though on whether the takedowns deal damage to his head or if they damage his legs. I don't know what they could have done there, but that should have been more clear. There's a second phase where Hammerhead grows a force field shield and you need to throw a bomb at before you can continue, but after that it's just business as usual. So what can be done here to improve the boss fights for this game? There's two ways you could approach this. Option 1 is that you treat bosses more like normal enemies. In this case, bosses would be more vulnerable to Spider-Man's gadgets and melee moves. You'd have to balance this out a bit by not making them as easy as the normal enemies, but I have some ideas for that. Bosses could take melee damage without having to be opened up first, but they wouldn't enter hit stun. This way, if you're quick and attentive, then you can quickly get some hits in without having to stun them. The more special attacks could cause them to enter hit stun, like the uppercut or the off the wall attack, maybe even some of the suit powers like the iron spider arms. The web would have to be a bit more situational. In order to not make them as easy as normal enemies, you can't have the web entirely immobilize them, so you'd have to make more specific interactions for them with enemies. So here's some examples. Maybe webbing Scorpion only affects his tail, preventing him from using it for a period of time. Maybe you can web Rhino's face, blinding him and making him attack the wrong spots, giving you the opportunity to hit him, that sort of thing. The second option is that you make the solutions to boss encounters even more situational. This approach means treating bosses even less like normal enemies, and more like puzzles or maybe in some cases like elaborate set pieces. Here's an example. In the Vulture and Electro fight, you can already get Electro to electrocute Vulture, and you can hit Electro and I think his Transformers as well with Vulture's feather projectiles, but these are optional things you can do in what is otherwise a standard boss fight. With this hypothetical proposal, these kind of things would be mandatory to defeat the two. Ideally, even more cinematic moments would be added. In this fight, Vulture will charge at you, the game will slow down and give you a circle prompt to dodge, after dodging, you're given the opportunity to web strike Vulture and attack him. Imagine if instead, you latched onto Vulture after dodging and you ride along his back. Maybe while you're doing this, Electro tries to strike you and instead hits Vulture. Or you have to steer Vulture into the Transformers that power Electro. Obviously there would have to be a balance with moments like this so the boss fights don't entirely ignore the game's core mechanics in favor of glorified quick time events. Maybe this sort of thing would only be used to close out the fight or as an optional speedrun strat for more creative players. But if you're going to have boss fights be incredibly simple anyway, then I don't see the harm in adding stuff like this. Then there's the obvious option of having both of these types of boss fights. Some fights that are just head-to-head -head struggles, and some fights that are more puzzle-like or cinematic. So yeah, that's all I have. Here's hoping that Spider-Man 2 blows the original out of the water, and isn't just the first game again with slightly better graphics. Thank you.